start over, let's start with, with getting into Abraham because that's how it starts for me too. Yeah, well, you know, for me, when, when the psychic said that I had this ability to channel, that I had all of this, I can't remember, it's been a long time ago, exactly how she explained, but everybody has a flow of energy coming to them. And you can call that source, you can call it your higher self, but it's an amalgam of energy. And she says that I had an extraordinary amount of that flowing to me and a more or less a direct connection to what she called God yeah. and which I call source. Yeah. And she said that I had the ability to share that message for the benefit of other people and to be on the stage sharing it, to write it, to, to do whatever I wanted. And it was something that I was gifted with. And at the time, I was very caught up in being a corporate guy. I liked psychic stuff and I've always been an open book. So I would share with people that I would do it, but I wouldn't go as far as saying I wanted to be one of those people. I didn't, that wasn't interesting to me at that time. And she right. told me about Abraham and she said, you really need to check out Abraham. And I just remember thinking Abraham sounds like the old Testament of the Bible. I grew up in church. I've gotten away from that now and I don't want to go back to that. So yeah. I, I, it's funny because I really, everything that she said resonated, everything that she channeled for me as far as passed on relatives and even pets was 100% accurate, but I didn't grab at the Abraham thing. And then she even predicted future stuff. She predicted my move to Seattle. She said I was going to live in a mansion at the top of a hill and I bought, you know, 4,000 square foot house at the top of a hill. Didn't even think about it until years later. So anyway, flash forward to years later when I'm living in Seattle I'm teaching what I thought I had invented when I was 14, which we now call the law of attraction and uh, the secret book had been out by then. So I knew really what it was all about. And I was teaching it to my um, employees. They were commissioned salespeople. And one of them approached me afterward one time and said, you're teaching the law of attraction. You get that right. And I said, right. yes, I know, but I can't call it that, you know, at work, HR will be calling me if I do that. <laughs> so she said, have you ever heard of Abraham? And I remember saying, you know, I've heard, that name, but I really am not into that stuff. So I don't know anything about it. And she gives me this box set of CDs and said, you need to listen to this. And what and year was this? What's that? What year was this? Uh, that was probably, I'm going to say around 2010. Okay. It was right around 2000. I saw Hazel. So it took me almost 10 years, like 2002, I think. So about eight years uh, to, from the time she told me about Abraham until I actually paid attention. Yeah. And so I'm, I've got this box set of CDs sitting in my passenger seat, driving home that very night. And I just moved it to Seattle from Florida. I really wanted to get trade my car for an all wheel drive. And I really wanted a black Range Rover. So I'm pulling into my neighborhood and turning left in front of me into my neighborhood is this black Range Rover and the license plate said Abraham. And so I took that as a very clear sign to go home and listen to the Abraham material that night. And it was all the original, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard it, but the, the first thing that Abraham right. did is mm -hmm. Jerry Hicks sat down yep. with Abraham and interviewed, I think it was from 1988, yeah. every single topic you could imagine. And that's and, when she had the accent. Yeah, very thick, uh, some sort of accent. Very, very, very. Like Eastern European, but super clear. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yes. And it was interesting to me because I would, even though I went to psychics, I knew I had incredible things coming to me and I had supernatural experiences from childhood on, I was still skeptical and I'd never heard of channeling. I didn't even know what it was. A right. woman told me and I wasn't even sure what she was talking about. Right. And when I listened, it just resonated with me immediately. Yeah. And it was like too. all of the things that had been coming to me made sense. And I agreed with everything that they said. And it was sort of like all of these crazy notions that I get about the universe working in reverse of what we think it does. And right. it, it was being confirmed for me and from a, a source that I really trusted and believed instantaneously. It was amazing. Well, I had the exact same experience. I was, um, had my own business, was building an empire, had real estate companies and bought buildings and had all kinds of developments going on. And then when the crash came, we lost everything. And so we moved to a friend's house that was in the most beautiful location you can imagine on a river uh, bordering a state park. You couldn't see your neighbors. 
but it was, you know, 30 minutes from our friends. We were sort of isolated up there and we're trying to figure out how to get back to where we were, how to get that money back. And so uh, Deborah Jo, who listeners will know, gave us the secret, which for the first time. So we got in our car with the only CD player we had and we just drove and drove and drove and drove, Lily and I, and listened to it over and over and over again. And we pretty much wore it out. And then in our own house was Ask and it Is Given by Abraham Hicks. And, and we great had book. listened to great, it. Great, great book. Yeah, it was the, the CD and we had listened to it and, but forgot it. So this was also 2010, same exact time. And, oh, wow. So you yeah. have the exact same time. That's interesting. Yeah. And so we started going to the Asheville um, Abraham workshops, which are two day events. So they're instead of just like nine to 12, nine to one, this is all day long for two days. And it's, it's pretty intensive. But after the first one, you know, I wasn't really working. And I, um, a realtor friend of mine called and said, I've got this contract. We're just going to put it in your name and then flip it to someone else. Something we used to do all the time with houses. Um, and we'll each make like five grand or something. I said, fine. And so I got back home and she says, the guy didn't want the house. Do you want to buy it? Well, I had no money at that time. We had lost everything, but I had a friend and we went together and I f fixed up the house and realized that was my passion from high school. And I had done it here and there. Um, but I was so focused on building this big business that I didn't really pay attention to what I really enjoyed doing, which was fixing up houses. And so just my vibration had raised so much from that experience with, with Abraham. And so we were off and rolling after that. And so just everything went so much smoothly after that experience. And we went back and we went to Cancun and did a land cruise and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then in 2013, I, in summer, about five years ago, started meditating. And I had been resisting meditating the whole time. And it, after a couple of weeks of meditation, I felt a presence in my head. And the presence was so obvious. And with a physical, I could feel it moving around. And that's what alerted me. But otherwise, before that, I had no idea. It, it Does it come to your left side? It, uh, it you actually comes to my left side. Yeah, side. it actually was, I think, my right. Let's see, hold on. It was my right side more often, yeah. Oh, uh, see, mine came in through the left. Did it? I'm into my jaw, and first, yeah, of my jaw. I had I started meditating right away in 2010 when I, you know, Abraham resonated so much, and it's funny because I definitely am, you know, if ADD is a thing, I am it. You know, sitting and, and trying to focus and all of that sort of thing has never been the easiest thing for me, and I actually sat quiet in my mind. And I had what I call a Kundalini awakening very quickly, like extraordinarily quickly. This uh, energy at the base of my spine mm. just exploded and, and just you know, out of the tips of my fingers, through the crown of my head, tips of my toes, moved through me. And that energy has been alive since then, since 2010. And it's, of course, gotten more, much more intense since then. Yeah. So I started realizing that I had the ability, I have this little cough that I do all the time. This little yeah. <clears throat> is like a catch in my throat. Yeah. That sort of developed. And then I started getting this feeling in my jaw and then it would go down into my throat. And that's when I realized that, okay, I get now that was my own manifestation that I needed to have to understand, to speak it. Talk. Yeah. yeah. But were, were you writing, writing before? Was I writing? Mm hmm uh, I was, uh, I, I tried some automatic writing and I would get different results at different times. I was actually, I wrote a novel during that time that I've never published. Yeah. I'm totally off the topic of law of attraction or spirituality or anything of that nature. But, uh, but it was a kind of a supernatural, you know, novel. It was like a Southern Gothic type of novel. Yeah. But, but yeah, it's interesting how that energy comes in. And I think it's what we're doing to signal to ourselves and, and make, make ourselves trust our abilities. Right. Uh, for me, it was like, so I, you know, I pretended it was some kind of energy or presence. And so I started asking questions and I got questions back, answers back right away. And then they said, I said, who is this? And they said, Joshua is clear. But I also had that uh, energetic prickly feeling on the top of my 
crown of my head too. But this only lasted 18 months. And when it was over, I said, why has this gone away? And, I, and it's still there a little bit, but not like it was before. It was so intense. And they said, you don't need it anymore. You know, you're, by this time I had done three books, so they didn't need it anymore. But April or uh, November 15th, 2013, after medita in meditation, they said, get up and write. And so I got up and I wrote the first three pages of the first book, a Perception of Reality. And, just, and it just came out so effortlessly. It was unbelievable. Because I had tried to write stuff before, and I had written two small books, both on business, one on marketing and one on real estate. And the effort that those books entailed was, you know, what I thought really writing was. And then this was just writing for half an hour to an hour every day, just letting it flow through me and not changing a thing. It, was, it took eight weeks for uh, each book to be done. Wow. Yeah, I... So, I, you know, my, my, I love to write, but I have to be in the zone of wanting to write and allowing it to flow. And then when I do, I'm all over it. I get, I'm very type A as you, it sounds like you are as well. You know, you just get it done and it, and yeah. you're in the zone and you're getting it done. It's just joyous and you can go all yeah. night and yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but I never thought I could speak it. I always thought it was just going to be writing. And then on the law of attraction cruise, I guess two and a half years ago, Jules Johnson said, you're going to speak, Joshua. And I was just on the Law of Attraction cruise as a speaker. So I had prepared some things to speak about. And we, we actually did our podcast on the cruise as well. But she goes, I'm going to hypnotize you and you're going to be able to speak it. And I didn't really believe her, but I said, what, what the hell? So we went to her cabin and she hypnotized me, which really just got me in this zone, more or less. I was clearly conscious. And then Joshua spoke through me for the first time. And once that happened, she helped me a few more times through the phone call and stuff. But, but it was off to the races after that. That's cool. You know, mine took a long time. I spent really a couple of years. I was living in high rises in Seattle and San Francisco. And I didn't even want, I was living in condos and I didn't want my neighbors to even hear it. Yeah. So I go down into the parking garage underground and um, record in my car. Wow. And, sit. And, and, and in the beginning, I had a very weird, uh, I don't even know how to describe, almost like an Indian accent. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> that's how it sort of came. And it, before that, it was kind of like I was gagging. It was like, eh, and, and yeah. I knew it was trying to, to, they were trying to speak, I shouldn't say it. Yeah. And it seemed more like an it at that time, though, I'll tell you that. But for me, I, I finally realized after all of this, you know, time, months and months and months that I spent recording in my phone, that if I just sort of relaxed, got into the zone where they were connected, sort of mentally stepped back and let myself speak, yeah. that's when it just started. And that's when I launched the podcast. Almost immediately after that, I said, I've got to get this out there. Yeah. They're not here to talk to me into my, you know, iPhone recorder. They are here to talk to other people. Right. share this and uh, it's it's evolved very quickly you know the podcast is just a little over a year old and in the beginning I, it sounded it was really slow and it sounded you know kind of awkward and then I started you I bought a nicer microphone and I started using headphones yeah when I started using headphones it got a lot clearer <clears throat> people would write to me and say what's you know and and, and I kind of got the vibe that they were saying what's going on with your channeling why does it sound like you now and not them yeah. And I realized, well, I'm using headphones. So obviously I'm still there regulating my voice now, which is what the headphones are for as I'm channeling. And so now my channeling is even clearer without the headphones. Yeah. I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and you're very clear. And if you've listened to a lot of other people, have you listened to many other channels? Like Abraham obviously is very clear too. Yeah. A lot of people lot. have different ways of doing it. They're slower, which drives me crazy. Um, yeah, the, the stream starts out slow, but I'm doing a lot of live Facebook channeling now on a lot oh, of venues. And now on Sunday nights, not every single Sunday night, but I'm on uh, Spirituality Gone Wild. They have a show on Sunday nights called Spark the G Vibe with uh, Debbie Garcia. She's amazing. Uh -huh. She uh, has me on, and I will channel the stream for two solid hours. Wow. And they and just she has questions. Good. Uh, she takes, she has questions and then she takes questions from, um, the, the Facebook viewers. 
Wow, that's great. So it's, and it's anything. The stream will answer any. Yeah. And there's nothing that you can't ask them. There's nothing they won't delve into. They've gotten me in a lot of trouble on podcasts talking about really hot hot button taboo subjects like politics and you know things like that. But yeah, they don't care. They'll go into anything and they'll exactly tell you how it is. Well, Joshua is uh, the tip of the leading edge of thought. And while Abraham is general, Joshua is way more specific. And the more specific you get, the more, you know, you brush up against people's beliefs because, you know, how can nothing be wrong? Yeah, you know, that's the first thing. Stream it's, says the same thing and people get really upset about that. And how can you bring cancer on yourself and all of that, you know? And of course, they, they, there's benevolence there. They, there's love there. I feel the love flowing through them so much that I'm crying sometimes when I'm finished. But they're just very honest and direct and, and want to help. Yeah. Well, you know, from a higher perspective, cancer isn't anything. It's a blink of an eye. It's, it's a choice that people make, uh, just like Jerry Hicks. When he got sick, he had time to say goodbye. And that's what cancer is. It's better than a, you know, you might think that a car crash would be better. But in a car crash, you can't say goodbye. You're just gone. Yeah. And you know, people are going to, to, like the stream says, put obstacles in their path. But when you're transitioning to the non-physical, there's a perfect way to do it. And it depends on who you are. And the problem is people put themselves in the shoes of others and say, I could never handle that. I don't want that. That's not for me. Well, yeah, it's not for you. It's for the person that went through it. What's for you, you'll be able to handle because you're perfectly equipped with everything you need to face any obstacle that comes your path. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when you're going through something personally, it's never as bad to you as it looks right. to someone on the outside. And, Absolutely. and it's so funny when you say a blip, you know, the, the, the street, there's, there's a lot of similarities here. And this, the stream is very clear that our entire existence here on planet earth is a little blip compared right. to our eternal existence. Yeah. And coming and going out, in and out of physical manifestation is continual. It's always going to happen. And we realize that it's just not that big of a deal. Right. From, and that's the higher perspective is looking at your life from how infinite intelligence or how you would look at your life from the non-physical. And that makes everything easier, especially death. And I think that from the people who are following Joshua, the ease around death has gotten so much easier. My, my mother died this year and it was so easy because we're eternally linked to everyone we know, you know, and, and uh, Joshua's talked to people who have lost children and things like that. And that the, the message is that the children are closer to you now than they were before, that you can still talk to them, that everyone has that ability to do it, but nobody really wants to because it's a little, you know, it seems weird. Yeah, well, you know, people don't understand also, and I, and I deal with a lot of people, especially in my coaching programs and stuff like that, who have had, you know, tragic loss, such as children being murdered and things like that. And, right. you know, working with people in that scenario, of course, is very a delicate situation because it's one of the worst things that we can experience as a human being. But under, coming to the understanding that when you are down in negative emotion, you don't have access to any non-physical because they all return to a pure, positive, completed state or death, whatever you want to call it. And, and they're up and positive, no matter right. how they were in life. And when you're down there, you know, hating the person that, that did it, wanting right. to find out, wanting to get all up in the investigation and... And he is wrong. All of the, you know, this is so horrible. Earth is terrible. The, the world is an awful place. That's your opinion and you, you're entitled to it, but you have to understand that you're cutting yourself off from the energy of the one that is passed on. Right. And that's what you want the most is to have right. that connection. Well, that's true of any time that you're in a negative state of being. When you're below that horizon, sty uh, horizon line of emotion, you cut yourself off from inspiration that's coming from the higher, you know, from your inner self or source or whatever you want to call it. 
And so Joshua's main message is that this is a feeling reality. And the only thing that matters is how we feel because we're not doing anything else other than feeling something. No matter what you're doing, you're either feeling good or bad. So the work is to figure out how to feel good more and more and more of the time for the purpose of receiving inspiration that will move you forward in your journey, you know, and make life easier and give you access to true inspiration. Absolutely. So it's, it's interesting because the, um, the consciousness is obviously coming to us from the same place, but being filtered a little differently based on our, you know, our vibration, our experiences and things like that. It's, it's been my intention all along to not have it flavored by me as, as little as possible, you know, and, and I talk to a lot of people now uh, that, that, you know, do different types. And of course, spirituality has so many branches and different beliefs and ideas and, and very often contradict one another. And it's all man-made stuff. Yeah. You know, source is source and that is it. And then everything else is man-made, you know, window dressing around it and tools that we use to, to better understand it and to use it. But I didn't want to get into all that. You know, I didn't want to get into all of these different branches and really go in and try to study. I really went inward to try to figure out for myself what all of this was because I wanted it to be pure. Right. You know, and, and, and that's where I, I think that's why people resonate with it so much because they just get it that, Oh, this makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's coming to me that this is real and, and raw and honest. And, you know, people have to be ready to not be victims and to not, you know, want to blame anyone else for what's going on in their lives to hear a message such as this so you know the, the message is not for everyone because absolutely most not people on the planet are not ready for that they want to you know retreat back into well that's not my fault and this isn't my fault and the government is doing this to us and right. you know i was out to dinner last night and um politics of course came up with the election coming up and somebody that you know labels themselves as an activist was like are, did you vote and of course I, i'm honest I said, I, I haven't voted. I haven't even thought about it, to be honest with you. I used to vote all the time. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with voting, but I haven't. He just like, well, how could you waste your vote? This is so terrible. I just said, you know, it doesn't affect me. I have nothing, right. it's nothing to do with me. And then what about everybody else? Well, I can't help everybody else. Everybody's going to help themselves. And of course, yeah. as an activist, he really didn't like that. <laughs> you know? We're supposed to pull people out of poverty and, and we're supposed to end gun violence. And I just wanted to say, well, how's it working out? Yeah. Well, that's the interesting thing is, you know, Joshua talks a lot about the idea of helping, helping others. Well, one, you're either a victim or you're the creator of your reality, right? Now, everyone is the creator of their reality, whether they understand it or not. But most, of, most people are living in this victim mode, thinking that things happen to them and that they uh, aren't creating. And, and they're also focused a lot on the on the problems of their life rather than what's going right. And so they attract more problems and that sort of thing. And they tend to view themselves as victims and then get proven right, right? Because their beliefs manifest into their reality. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears throat> when you take someone and show them that they're the creator of their reality, then they have to figure out how to take responsibility for everything that they're creating. And that's the tricky, <laughs> excuse me, that's the tricky part there. <laughs> yeah, what I deal with, and what I deal with a lot in, in my work is making people understand that we came here, or trying to guide people to understand, I should say, to, that we came here for the contrast, that we came here to have the obstacles. Because what happens inevitably, and I'm sure you know this, when people discover all of this and they release and say, okay, fine, I get it. I create my reality. I see evidence of that all around me. I understand now. But then when things go wrong, they start beating themselves up about creating sure. unwanted reality, which just makes it worse. You're just taking yeah. yourself further down the spiral. You say below the horizon. I say, you know, below or the stream really says below neutrality. Right. Um, and I totally got what you meant when you said horizon, because there is that little dividing line between positive and negative. And when you go down into negative, everything that you do is going to have a negative outcome while you're creating from that space. Exactly right. Um, and it's all the negative outcome itself is just perspective, right? So Joshua says there is no right, there is no wrong, there is no negative, 
you know, it is all positive. It's all for you. If you're the creator of your reality, then whatever you created is for you. You're a being of love. So all your creation is based in love. But from your limited perspective, you, you perceive it as wrong or bad. And so the work is truly to, to see how to perceive it as right. For instance, when I lost all my money in the, in the crash, I perceived some decisions I made as wrong, that this happened to me, even though, you know, in essence, I was prepared for it. Um, but even looking back, I, I would say, if I had just made this decision, everything would have turned out. But now where I am here, I guess we're 10 years after the fact, I can see how everything worked perfectly to get me to get interested in law of attraction, to get interested in Abraham, to start channeling, and then to create a life based in joy instead of based in trying to achieve my a state of worthiness. You know, recognizing that I'm worthy now, and now I can just focus on what I prefer. And so I can look back now and say, oh my God, that was perfect the way it happened. It happened, everything happened perfectly because I'm looking at it from a higher perspective of, of, of 10 years of time. Yeah, we well, can, you know, I believe that we, from the strength teachings, we teach, and, and I'm, it sounds like you're getting the same thing, obviously. The, you have these obstacles that you create and sometimes place yourself in an almost emergency situation because it forces you to think deeper and, and think bigger and then you bounce even higher from it. That's yeah. what it's all about. And, and yeah. you can appreciate even the, the, the worst of those times for what it delivers to you and what you create from it. You yeah. understand how the entire universe was created. Yeah, Everything exactly. An answer right. to a problem or a perceived problem. Yeah. In fact, you know, I look at this, you know, <clears throat> any people can get worried about things that happen. They're going to happen in the future, like global warming or, you know, running out of oil in the seventies. People were, worried that we'd run out of oil and then someone from inspiration created the solution, the catalytic converter or whatever inventions were done. And so now whenever there seems like this big problem, I always know that the solution is waiting there for someone to become a vibrational match to it. And it's all going to work out. And if you take this higher picture of society and civilization, everything's gotten better. Everything's gotten better from a thousand years ago to 500 years ago to a hundred years ago to 50 years ago, you know, things get better, but from a limited perspective, you just are focused on problems. You see how, you know, you can't imagine how they're going to be solved. And that's because you're in that perspective of fear about whatever the problem is instead of the perspective, like it's going to work out. It's always going to work out. People are going to put obstacles in front of you or in front of themselves in order to overcome because in the non-physical, there's no fear, there's no lack, there's no, uh, you know, there's, there's no way to really expand. Because you can, in the non-physical, I'm assuming you can create whatever you want, but you understand that it's a fantasy and it's not, it doesn't have any realness to it. So in physical reality, we come in with a survival instinct and so there's things that make us feel fear. And Joshua is saying, Okay, there's rational fear, that which could kill you, and there's irrational fear. And all the irrational fear is false. It's yeah. all based on these limiting beliefs you have that are triggered by what you perceive to be a dangerous situation. Yeah, that, the stream belief. says, you know, the fear is there. At one time, it was there to keep us from being eaten by something right. bigger than us. Now it's there to keep you from being run over by a bus. But if right. you run, run wild and be abused by other people, you know, when you allow people to instill fear, and all, almost all news. All news. A lot of advertising. A lot of advertising. Most so advertising. Many messages right. that we get thrown at us all day long are all there to induce fear, to motivate us. And it's a very powerful tool if you allow it to be. Absolutely. And politics is such an example of that on any side. That's why I don't participate anymore. Yeah. That I know that it's not the answer to anything. But this, yeah. this person was just adamant that, you know, the government needs to take care of people and the government needs to do this. And the government needs to do that. And like, sorry, that doesn't work that way. You know, we, we take care of ourselves and we are far right. more powerful in our own lives than somebody sitting in the White House or Congress or wherever, for sure. And that's what I think is so wonderful about Trump is that he shows us that this position really has no impact. 
That's oh my anyone. God. It's, it's so funny. It's like you and I are, I'm the one sitting there saying that. And I was, I was talking to somebody the other night uh, that was a, a Trump supporter and she was being apologetic. And, and I said, I, I don't care who you support. I said, I actually, I think the, the interesting thing about Trump is that he's kind of showing politics for the bullshit that it really is. Right. And, and kind of blowing that whole thing up. The presidency of the United States will never be the same again. Never now. be the same. And that's exactly. not a bad thing. It was always revered. And you always, growing up, assumed that the president was the most powerful person in the world. And that you had to have someone smart there who could make proper decisions. Because otherwise, the you know, entire world would collapse. And now we know that you could put anybody there and nothing's <laughs> going to matter. <laughs> Well, really, I, say that I, I do think he is the master of the law of attraction because he knows how to attract to himself whatever he wants and he knows how to instill fear and, 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 and stir up emotion that gives him power. Yeah, he, he's mastered that for sure. There, there may be a whole host of other things that he really doesn't know a whole lot about, but he has mastered that for sure. And it's an interesting thing to watch him and how that shift happened in the election and all of that. And I hope it just makes people realize that, you know what, so many people thought their lives were going to be over by now with him in the White House. And here right. we are, fine. You know, yeah. I know not everybody is fine, but as a yeah. humanity and as an Americans, right. nothing has really changed. No. Well, that's a, the theme of, you know, Joshua, is that in this moment now, there is no problems. Everyone is fine in this one moment, you know. And people go, well, what about when you're being tortured? And then, and then you could say, well, in that moment, you're not. But the vast <laughs> majority of your life is good moments. But you regret the past or worry about the future, and then you put yourself uh, unnecessarily in fear. And it's really important to think about that. Think about everything you're doing so that you feel better, 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 instead of worse, 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 worse. And it's a mental practice that, you know, I've been doing over the last five years and it's still, you know, I meditate every day. I try and organize this life so that it's calm and relaxed and comfortable and enjoyable and as easy as possible. Um, and it's still tough to do it. You know, it's still tough to do that mental work that needs to be done. It's, it's tough not to react when you've, been taught to react your whole life and deep, right. you know we all can and I'm sure you're aware we all can and I see people make miraculous changes with just a little yeah. bit of coaching time intense coaching time but right. you know I've gotten myself now to a point where you know I, I left my corporate job I don't have a regular paycheck anymore for the last year I've been supporting myself doing numerous things really within the stream business and so my money has an ebb and flow to it now, like it hasn't had in many, many years. And I just went through this period where it just stopped. And right in the middle of all that, I kind of recognize, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm putting this in my path for a reason. I'm not sure right. what it is. And I go out to the mailbox one day and the stream talks about that all the time, you know, that we meditate and we get ourselves all up the spiral and up in vibration about money and then we open an email or open the mailbox or look at our paycheck and boom, we plummet right back down. And that's what our vibration about money really is. If that's yeah. happening. So yeah. I open my mailbox and there's two letters from the IRS in the mailbox, which is never good. Yeah. Never good. And you know, I've never had a tax issue because I've been employed, you know, the, when I was making a whole lot of money, I was employed doing it. Yeah. When employed making a lot of money. It's really pretty easy. Yeah. Um, but now all, all of a sudden there's something from years ago that has come back that, you know, is biting me in the middle of this, no money coming in period. And I just laughed about it. I opened it. I just laughed about it. I didn't let it take me down the spiral. I knew that there was a lesson in it. Yeah. For me, it made me realize that I needed to create solutions for people that aren't vibrationally aligned with having a lot of money coming in that want to take you know, my coaching programs and things like that, that aren't so costly and involved, you know, that sort of thing. And that now I won't get too deep into it, but I, I'm creating a whole other layer that's going to serve a whole other layer of people based on that experience that I went through. It was very, made very clear to me that, you know, I need to serve at all levels from free to premium and everything in between for what people are vibrationally up to speed with. Right. The whole idea is, you know, 
if, if the stream message resonates with them, they sort of get on this ladder and start climbing with it and expanding with it. And, and that's how I change people's lives. Yeah. The level that they're ready to be changed at. Well, so big lesson for me. And when I figured that out, boom, that situation for me turned around immediately. Yeah. Well, what Joshua would call that is a manifestation event. And so a manifestation event occurs and it could be a positive one or a negative one based on your, based on what it is, but it's there to highlight a limiting belief. And so, so if you have this limiting belief, you can't really get to where you intend to go in this explore, exploration of life until you learn to dial down those limiting beliefs. And so the manifestation first comes in a thought. And if the thought is, if you perceive a thought as a negative thought or a bad thought, that's your chance to understand that the only reason you could think that thought was negative is because you have some limiting belief there. And so you can address that limiting belief with that thought right there, and that's the very early stages. But if you ignore those thoughts and ignore those thoughts, then the universe is gonna put you in a situation where you'll notice it a bit more. And it might be a fender bender, or it might be getting fired from your job, or it might be an argument with a, a spouse. Or in my case, I was doing, um, going through this uh, abundance issue with money. And so I was constantly losing. I was a poker player, and I, was, I had a lot of cash. And I was putting cash in different places and not really paying attention to it, but losing it, right? Losing stacks of money, like $1,000 here and there. And so I had to get to the point where I'm start, stopping blaming Possibly the housekeeper took it, possibly one of the workers took it, possibly I you know, just lost it somewhere. And soften that belief that, that abundance is tied to money, right? That if you lose the money, it's no big deal. That you can get it back easily. That the money is just a form of energy. And it's not about holding on to, and this was cash too. So it wasn't like, you know, you get a bill or something. This was cash that was getting lost. And so I would just remind myself that abundance is having what you need to do, what you need to do when you need to do it and not this cash. And then, so then we sold the house for a ton of money. We did really well. And in moving, I found all these piles of cash that I had hid in books and things like that. You know, it was like this just awakening that, you know, this is all for you. All these events, all these things happen for you. Um, do you have anything like that that's called a manifestation event? Because that's the one thing that I think is um, more unique about Joshua. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, it's just that the, not labeled that way at all, but definitely understanding that we go down the spiral into negative emotion due to polarity naturally. And mm -hmm. that time is meant to create our obstacles. Mm -hmm. And we can control that and we can create a lot less obstacles if we appreciate and acknowledge being down there yeah. and then meet our obstacles that do arrive and they always will to some yeah. enjoy understanding that it's there to make you think a little deeper and create more. And that's why we're here. Yeah. So have that, that manifestational event, as you call it, or that, yeah. that unwanted negative thing. It's the obstacle. Very, the obstacle that ends right. up becoming the launch pad for your next new creation. And, and very often, the greater the obstacle, the greater creation that springs from it. And again, that's how all creation and all expansion is driven. Yeah. The has been very clear. They don't experience obstacles and they don't, they're the most powerful energy there is in the universe, but their expansion is due to our collective expansion right. contributing to their energy. Right. And when, when I got that from them, everything made sense that the very worst of what happens on our planet isn't as we perceive it to be as you've said but it all creates expansion and i did a live event in la several months ago and the stream had said something about the holocaust and, and hitler and somebody in the audience said that they were they were kind of really trying to understand the stream's perspective on all of that because that was one of the most horrific things that has happened in our recorded history for sure as humanity and somebody in the audience said but look at all the good that came wow. out of that and all of the shifting of thought that came after that and yes there's some residual people out there something just happened this past weekend that was a residual 
you know, vibration of that for sure, but much different. Look at all of the, the positive that spring forth. And then the very worst thing in our minds that can happen to us as a human being is to be killed. And we're really just being returned to our completed state of pure positive energy, which is an amazing experience yeah. to behold an amazing existence. But then when we're there, all we want to do is come back and be physical again, at least for a while, right. to experience the contrast to do it all over again. And, and we've yeah. all died. They all said that, you know, you've all died a thousand deaths. It's not right. a big deal. Don't fear right. it. Don't make it such a big deal. It's okay to not want it to happen, especially yeah. the way sometimes it does, but don't make it this big, fearful, horrible, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you thing. Because once you're on the other side in your completed state, you do not view it that way at all. Well, all death is suicide, and death is a whole lot easier than birth. You yeah, and, and, and I've heard, you know, the stream has been very clear. It sounds, and I'm vibing now that Joshua is very clear. Abraham is very clear. The death experience is not at all. The universe works in reverse. Right. We have everything so backward in our society, yeah. it seems, that we don't realize that you've got to put the cart before the horse. You know, that's yeah. how creation happens. You. And yeah. sometimes even people that, you know, listen to the podcast, join a coaching program that I do and get in and, and they'll say, so I just have to lie to myself. I have to lie. <laughs> yes. You have yeah. to, you have to raise your vibration and change your perspective right. to whatever serves you better. That serves what you want to create, you know, so you're saying that a new building that isn't created yet is a lie because it hasn't been built yet. Then nothing would ever be built. Right. Of course, that building is a lie until it's been created and designed and, and, and built. Of course it is, if that's how you want to define a lie. Yeah. Well, um, so another thing that Joshua talks about is that, and Abraham too, all thoughts that have ever been thought still exist. And all thoughts that will ever be thought exist as a form of potentiality. And those who become a vibrational match to the thought unlock and receive the thought. And that we don't create these thoughts in our head or these ideas in our head. We receive them because we become, become a vibrational match to them because it's part of our, uh, whatever we're doing, we're engaged in it. And if we need that thought or that inspiration, then, then it comes to us, but only from a positive emotional state of being. Yeah, I did a, I did a show not long ago um, called This Will Blow Your Mind, but it was really quantum physics. And it was the stream taking the idea of quantum physics and bringing it down to a very easy to understand level, which is what they tend to do. And you know, basically what they said is the, the only thing that's really happening is this very second. Everything yeah. that's happened before now only exists as consciousness. Everything that's going to happen after this all exists as consciousness. But it's in both directions is constantly in flux based on our changing thoughts. And that's what polarity does. It, it takes our thoughts. You know, one day when you're super, super up your spiral and you're really in high vibration, you're, you're thinking about your future and I'm wealthy and I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm surrounded by great people and I'm in a beautiful place. That's exactly what you're creating in that moment. But the problem is polarity will pull you down you'll go into a more negative state and you'll start to doubt that a little bit. Well, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, eh, maybe a different version. You start negotiating and then that starts shifting that future creation because you're not locked into it. But that's really by design. But what a lot of people don't understand is that you can do that in reverse. Also, you can yeah. change your focus, your perspective of what happened in your past to a version that serves you better in your now and your future. Because Absolutely. everything that's happened in your past just exists as your idea. That's why two siblings can grow up in the same household and, and tell very opposite versions of their childhood and about their parents. Right. And neither of them are wrong. They just have different perspective. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, uh, Joshua's third book was a radical change in your approach to life. And that approach is from one of fear and control to one of love and acceptance. So from Joshua's perspective, there's only two emotions, love and fear, not love and hate, but love and fear. Hate is just fear. You can't hate something without fearing it. You can't be bored without a bit of fear in there. You should be doing something else, that sort of thing. And then all positive emotions are based in love. Uh, and so when you get that, you can sort of see where you're, 
where your perspective is. If you are in a negative emotion, there's something that's causing you some fear. And without the limiting beliefs that's being triggered that creates the fear, you couldn't perceive anything, couldn't perceive that subject as wrong, and you couldn't have a negative emotion. So it's this idea of, again, of, of working backwards and realizing that you've got to work either on your perspective, raise your perspective, or on that limiting belief that you have here. Um, but the interesting thing is that the idea, and I wrote this in the email to you, um, that we put obstacles in our path for the joy and satisfaction of overcoming them. And if we're afraid to go out on a limb or get out of our, out of our comfort zone, then, you know, and this being, then I think obstacles are placed there for us without, and then those obstacles seem bigger and worse. Like uh, right now I've moved from West Palm Beach up here to North Carolina. I bought an abandoned Victorian house and I'm almost done remodeling it, but it's been like a six month thing. And it's been this, this one obstacle that I've been working on and getting a lot of satisfaction from and going through periods of contrast and periods of excitement, you know, plus all the other stuff that I'm doing as well. And so I'm wondering if we can step out of our comfort zone and place obstacles in our own path, is that a better way of doing it than playing it safe and having the universe do it for us? See, I, I kind of like the, the organic nature of the unexpected obstacle because I think that forces you to think deeper yeah. and come up with a better solution. Because I know if you tell me that, you know, I get to place my own obstacles and I understand that I do place them, but if I did it right. intentionally, intentionally, yeah, I, I would probably not as, as it, I would probably never again place a financial obstacle. You know, I'm like, right. I'm, yeah, that's good. Let's do something different from now on. You know, let's have too many Lamborghinis and I don't know where to store them or something you know? <laughs> of that nature. I don't even like Lamborghinis. Honestly. But, um, you know, that's, I, I think that when we let the universe surprise us, I think that it, it that it, it strengthens our muscle even yeah. more. And that, that delightful surprise comes along that maybe isn't even so delightful in the beginning until you right. realize the nature of it. But, you know, when you get the IRS letter, yeah. And you're like, okay, I owe more money. In fact, I need to send them some money before I get a penalty. But, um, yeah. you know, it, it's just that I, this is just a sign to me that I will manifest that much extra to pay for this without even worrying about it. Right. And when you well, I think that's good. Yeah. That, that vibration, you solve it immediately. Yeah. That's a really good way to look at it where you don't need to be afraid of these um, obstacles that come up or these manifestation events that come up that, that, you can get good at processing when they do come up. Uh, there's another thing in Joshua is that what you think you want is much different than what you truly want. And the truly want things stem from the intentions you set prior to your birth. You truly want to express your love. You truly want to experience joy and freedom and abundance and expand through experience and to explore reality in a, in a new way. And what you think you want is safety and security and love from others, you know? And that's another idea is that you didn't come here to receive love. You came here to express your love unconditionally. And the idea that you should receive love is sort of um, a security blanket or a, or a control mechanism. Well, it's about loving yourself first and having that connection with source where you don't need it. And then in the not needing of it, you get it. Yeah. You know, the universe works in reverse. And, and when yeah. you're that confident and that, you know, there's nothing more appealing to us as human beings than someone who is, is confident. Yeah. And that's why, you know, actors and successful business people, all that, they all are, have a common thread of, of confidence. Right. And it's very appealing. And it, it's almost a, we don't need it. And people look at, at Hollywood at the divorce rate and think, gosh, they're so broken and they're so shallow and they can't, well, it's because they're so confident and comfortable with themselves very often that these relationships are more of a fling Flexible. or, or uh, yeah, in and out. Hey, this is fun right now. When right. it's not fun anymore, we're going to, uh, what are the, what did uh, Gwyneth Paltrow call it? Consciously uncouple and, and, yeah. and move on to other things. And 
in the stream has been very clear that, you know, this idea of pairing off for life and having a contract and it will shall not be broken. You can do that if you want, but it's not necessarily how we're designed, you know, not at all. And you know, we're changing billions of times a second. Uh, and if you are allowing yourself to follow your own path without requiring that your mate join you, then you can be together in love while you're together. And then when you're ready to make a transition to not being together anymore, then that will also be in love. Lily and I are doing that right now. We are going through this incredibly conscious and harmonious uh, end of a relationship, end of a marriage in love because we are eternally connected. We deeply care about each other, but we just have different interests right now. And, and then I look now and say the success of a marriage is not determined by the years. It's determined by the love that's there in the beginning, middle, and end, and afterwards as well. And so, yeah, the society believes you should be married for forever is based in fear and control. Yeah, you know, I was, I was in a relationship for 19 and a half years, and the first, you know, six were good. <laughs> yeah. And then it became a, a business relationship. Yeah. And then it got nasty. And then it got a little better. Then we split. And we're friends now. In fact, he just went through my coaching program. We've, wow. been, we've been divorced for five years. He just took my coaching program. And I did a, a, a testimonial with him. I do testimonials with everyone that graduates. And he said, I can attest that the stream is real because I know David does not have this much wisdom. Right. Well, <laughs> all my friends like that too. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was really funny that he did that. And, and uh, you know, he, he's, he has seen how my life has gone. Right. And he pushed against it for many, many years. And finally, you know, in his late 40s, he said, I, I, I get it now. You know, you, what you say and what you do and how you ran your life via the law of attraction this stuff works and, yeah. and he wanted more of it. So, you know, he, he went through that. So it's very interesting. And I'm, I'm in another marriage now and I married somebody 25 years younger than me. Yeah. And, um, you know, which is what you do at midlife after your first <laughs> For sure. at the sports car and everything, you know, I did the whole package of, of midlife. Right. So, um, he now, he, he's not loving Palm Springs because there aren't a whole lot of 25 year olds here. He wants to move to LA and, and pursue acting and do his thing. And, I don't know where our relationship is going to go with all of that. And it's just a flow. And right. I, I just said, you know, I'm the one that tells everybody they can do or have whatever they want. So yeah. I'll say you can't do that. If that's what you really want to do and you want to leave and go do that, then yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're moving into new territory now for sure. But well, you know. that's absolutely um, the, you, that would bring up a fear that you would say, my life is going to be worse if he's not here, but knowing what you know, when someone leaves, it opens up room for someone else. And you can't imagine this other person who's not shown up yet. But if you have faith that that's how the system works, that's how the whole thing's designed, you know for sure that as a being of love, in a you know, high emotional state of being, in, in pure positive, and, and having faith that, that you're going to attract even better and even more deep experiences, then you can be relaxed if they decide to stay or if they decide to go, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, and I sort of had this, you know, uh, this, this desire, I, I want to travel and do a lot of live workshops and, and things like that. Yeah. And I actually have a partner now that's going to sort of take over running my academy where I can do more of that. I love getting out live with people and channeling the stream, it, whether it's, you know, via zoom on Facebook or live in person is, is even more desirable. Yeah. I'm going to do a lot more of that. And I really thought he would do that. And then, you know, he said, I want to go have my own career and make my own money. And, and I really appreciated that, you know, so many people, you know, the idea of the gold digger that wants to, you know, come and, and marry the, the older guy and just live off of their money. That's real. I see that in Palm Springs daily. And I appreciate the fact that I attracted somebody who naturally gets all of this and who, who believes in himself and wants to go do his own thing. You know, he's got everything. He lives in a beautiful home with a pool and has everything right here, but it's, he, he wants to go do his own stuff. Yeah. I love that. I think that's yeah. amazing, you know? Yeah. So, 
I'll take the dog with me instead, and she and I will travel the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to be together on the Law of Attraction cruise in April next year, 2019. That should be fun. Absolutely. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. I was on the last one. I've channeled now with somebody. I, I did a private event um, not long, a couple of weekends ago, and, um, and I forget her name, Josie, and she channels Archangel Gabriel. And at the very end of the event, she was channeling Gabriel, and they called in the stream, and we channeled at the same time, and it was really cool. Really? Yeah. Really, I always really thought cool. about what and that people, yeah, people are like, are they going to argue? I'm like, I don't think that type of vibration is going to argue. There's just going to be a, a flow. And it was lovely. It was, it's, it, it's an interesting thing for sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's something that uh, I think you and I need to get together in person and, and do that sometime. Yeah. You know, that'd you get be that similar stream, same stream, really, coming through, being filtered through two different human beings with a very compatible message, but I'm sure it's not identical. So, yeah. I think that's um, would be a very interesting thing to to do, especially yeah. a, a, a group that's really in the vibration of wanting to receive it. Right, it'll be fun, definitely. We should definitely yeah. do that. That'll be great. Yeah, I've always thought about what that would be like, um, and but you know, when I was thinking about it from my own perspective, that uh, a lot of people are very general, very slow deliberate and Joshua is very fast and fun and boisterous and exuberant and uh, makes makes me look a little silly sometimes because my uh, you know when you're talking to somebody you sort of manage your facial expressions but when Joshua is doing it it's just anything goes but it's fun so it'll be fun doing it with you because I really love the way the stream comes through you it's very clear, which I uh, admire a lot, and is very, um, uh, you know, articulate and and still leading edge and still um, specific, not not so general. So that's why I, I think that's you know what I have heard from Joshua is that Abraham is the stream coming through Esther, and Joshua is the combination of that intelligence and Gary. And that's why it's different because what I'm more interested in, it comes out that way. Like I'm, I want the more specific stuff, the more actionable that you can actually take action and make these changes. I want to see re obvious results in people who go through the one-on-one -on -one program and who go through a live conversation, you know, and see that, that they, change their perspective. Now Joshua says it's, you know, you're perfect as you are. You can't improve. You're perfect in every moment. You're perfect the day you're born. You're perfect now. You're not going to get any better. You're not better because you can walk. When, when you were a baby, you couldn't walk. You're perfect at each incarnation of who you are. But as you can see yourself from a higher perspective, then you open yourself up to more and more and more. For instance, going through college, I wasn't any better the day I graduated than the day I started. It's just that I assumed I was more intelligent and I had this degree and that people should you know, respect me. And so I saw myself from a higher perspective. Um, you know, so it's like, it's gonna be, it'd be very interesting to see how we do it together. So maybe on the cruise, we'll do it, do one special workshop together. Yeah, I think that's, uh, and it's a good way to get people to come on the cruise, come see, two channels at once. <laughs> which is, yeah, which is, I don't think I've ever seen that before. You know, I've never no, seen. Well, you know, I, I think there's some, um, there's like, a, we all have competitiveness. It's natural to have, you know, I, I want to do really well at what I do, of course, and I want to serve everybody at the very highest level. But, you know, I, we talk all the time, the stream and I about pulling, you know, thinking of fear as this little component that you pluck right. out of something and then evaluate you strip with the fear away what would you do yeah, well right. why fear that why fear sitting with somebody else who channels that i obviously resonate with yeah you know why fear that and when i hear people especially people that are spiritual workers coming from a place of fear i just want to say you know hey pull that component out and you will serve your audience so much yeah. better 
because as you said, fear is, it's a low vibration and unless right. a bus is rushing toward you, it serves no purpose other than to limit you. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I get a little bit of anxiety before channeling because, you know, I have, um, what if it doesn't come out right? What if this, what if I can't bring them in? That sort of thing. Now I have to say that that's very minor, but because every time it works, it's always fine. And it's only my judgment of it before and after the fact. During it, it's, it's fine, you know. Um, so I have to take out that fear component of it and just go with it. Another aspect, though, is that when I was in business, I was driving and driving and driving and building and building and building. Success, 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 you know. And I was, I was you know, trying to make as much money, trying to look as good as possible, be really ambitious, really competitive, and really going after what I thought I wanted. It was, but it was never satisfying because what I thought I wanted was already within me, which was worthiness, we'll say. And so now in this, I'm letting it flow. So I'm, I'm getting inspiration. So the inspiration was to contact you and, and have this meeting together and record it and get it out there and let it be free flowing and the inspiration to go on the law of attraction cruise and the inspiration to have podcasts and write the books. But I, um, but I don't, I want, I need to check myself where I think about that to be building this and you know, it, it sort of grows organically. There's book clubs all over and we've done the Joshua documentary and stuff, but you know, it's not the Abraham size at all. And I don't know if I want that. I don't know if I'm limiting it. I don't know if I should be doing more. What do you think about that? Are you, you sound well, like I, I am, as a human, I am ambitious for sure. Yeah. And I have said, you know, I want to change the lives of a million people. I don't want to reach, I want to reach far more than that. But I, 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 I will say that this message my goal, the stream could care less. Right. <laughs> they, they, wanna, they wanna get out and play with whoever wants to right. be operationally aligned with it, whether it's one person or the entire planet, it's available right. it's there, come or not. You know, they often say, we don't have David on you know, sidewalks handing out pamphlets for this. You know, this right. is, you're drawn to this or not. But for me, I admire what Jerry and Esther built and what Esther has carried on since then. I admire, I call Esther the Beyonce of channeling. You know, she Absolutely. doesn't. Absolutely. She, she does exactly what she wants to do. You know, Beyonce right. doesn't do interviews. Beyonce doesn't announce when her album is coming out. She just, there, there's a new album. You know, here's a new video. Here's a concert tour. And I've seen her in concert. She's amazing. And, and I, I look at Esther that way, that she's just amazing. But she's, she's serving who she wants to serve, the way she wants to serve them. And she's doing it her way. And I'm using that as inspiration. But I have different goals. I want to build... I think you spoke of this for yourself. I want to build a stream center out here in the desert, a, a place where we can broadcast from that, you know, use technology to get the message out to as many people as want it. We've created a, a spiritual practice called Taya, T-Y-A, for trusting your abundance. Taya is, it's a spiritual practice that is not judgmental or dogmatic, but it's something that if you do these four things that we teach in Taya, you really get your life together because it's all about forgiveness and vibration allowing source connection to flow and setting positive intentions for everything that you do. And that's what my Academy is. And, and you know, I want to expand that because books are great. YouTube videos are great. Podcasts are great. They inspire, they can help you shift your life. But as you know, there's nothing like getting into a, a boot camp environment right. where you're working you know, on, on specific things over a very brief focused period of time to really change who you are. And that's what, um, you know, that's what my goal is, is, is to change a million people that want to be changed, that want to release the stuff from their past and live a more joyous existence and understand that money isn't everything, but you can attract all of it that you want. I had the right. same experience. I was 40 years old living in my million dollar house. I grew up very poor minimum wage, single parent household, very, very poor. And when you're poor and you know you have this thing that you think you invent called the law of attraction going on, all you want to do is manifest money because you think it's the answer to everything. And I got right. to age 40, I had used that ability, that knowledge to just manifest a lot of money and a lot of stuff. 
and I would walk around my big fancy house and look at all my fancy stuff. They go open the cabinet, look at my Waterford crystal and oh, look what all I've got now. And I was miserable. Yeah. hundred pounds overweight. I was in a bad marriage. I was working at this corporate job because I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I thought the corporate job was the way to go. It was secure and that's all fear based. And you know, I, I realized, okay, I have all this stuff and all this money flowing in and it's not everything. There's, there's some big holes here that, that I need to address if I want to live the rest of my life in a happier state. Right. Absolutely. That's what I call true abundance. True abundance yeah. is all of it. Have all the stuff you want, all the cars, all the houses, all the money, all the yachts. That's great. But don't expect that to be it, everything because it really is about joy and clarity and when you get high on that spiral and you get your source connection flowing and you have joy and clarity, you don't even care so much about the stuff. And then the stuff comes anyway. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, uh, in not caring about the stuff, the stuff can come. In caring about the stuff, it, it can still, you can still manifest it, but you're not going to get that satisfaction of it because it's not, the satisfaction isn't derived in the receiving of the stuff. Satisfaction is derived in the living of this life in an abundant and joyful and open, faithful way where, where now you just focus on truly the, the bigger picture of life, the joy and the love and the expressing love and that sort of thing without the worry and the fear and all that stuff. Too. You know, I've had a lot of worry. I've been to beautiful places traveling. I've eat, eaten at amazing restaurants and drink expensive wine, done all of that stuff. And I love nothing more than meeting a person that I instantly resonate with, that I know we are somehow vibrationally aligned beyond what's happening in this moment. Right. That vibe, I call it vibing. You know, when I, yeah. vibe, I live in Southern California, so I can say things like that. Yeah. When I vibe <laughs> with somebody, that's the best feeling in the world, whether it's, you know, a romantic thing or not, just, just meeting it and just getting them and sitting there. I was like that with Jules. Yeah. You know, I, we communicated very little. The opportunity for me to be on the network was instantaneous, you know, from nowhere. And then she invited me, she lives here in the desert where I live. Right. So she invited me to this event and we showed up and we just sat together and it's in, and, and joked and laughed and it's like we've known each other a hundred years, you know, it's, yeah. I, I, that's my favorite thing in life is to meet somebody and vibe that way. Jules and I had that same connection and she, uh, I was living in West Palm Beach at the time and she had lived eight blocks from my house back wow. at, at one time, which is funny. So she knew West Palm Beach very well. And it's just interesting, the synchronicity and the coincidences that show up when you are vibing with somebody. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I, I lead everybody. If you want to really be happy, focus on stuff like that and then let all of the material things flow in and out and back in if, if need be. Yeah. Great. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I think we're vibing for sure. We're, we're vibing for sure. <laughs> Good. I um, will post this wherever and maybe we'll do this again because this is really fun. See, for me, just like you were saying, this connection, I don't know how long we've been talking here. Uh, We're probably yeah, up on an hour, right? Yeah. And <laughs> recorded for about an hour. And it's like, it felt like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I went by really quick. It's been great. Yeah. It's been great. Awesome. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see you on the Law of Attraction cruise in April, but we'll get together and do more stuff like this and then prepare for a dual channeling session. Yeah, it'll be cool. Maybe maybe the boat will self-destruct now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll create an energy vortex. Yeah, that'll, that'll, something's gonna happen. Think uh, a carnival cruise ship. That'll that'll make the news. <laughs> awesome. All right, Gary. Thank you so much for having me on. All right, David. Thank you.